Hey guys, Kelvin here from FBio and today we are going to talk about OEM, the Q&As and the basics of it. And um, there are a lot of people that um, inquire to us and you'll be surprised. People just are inquire, they're inquired because they want to do something new but they don't know what to do. So uh, sometimes it's like, what should we make? What is the topic of the year? Uh, should I make a relaxation product? Should I make an antioxidant product? Should I make a beauty product? Um, how do I know and where do I look for this information? One key area that's um, very easy to find out information is actually social media. And a thing called Google Analytics does a very good job about this. Um, you can go to um, uh, the Google Ads function. Under Tools, there's a thing called Keyword Search and you can have a look at how many people are searching for these topics um, at any point in time. And it's actually very accurate. We've done very well with our SEO optimization and keyword targeting by looking at that. Another thing is a lot of market research. Uh, if you join a lot of groups or chamber of commerce, they tend to share a lot of this market research reports. For example, uh, during COVID, uh, which what we are experiencing now, there was an uptake in household products and disinfectants, uh, followed on by this current quarter, a drastic reduction in purchasing. And they attribute that to uh, what they call a surplus or sporadic buying. So these market research activities does very well in helping you identify what you need to know. Something else you can look at is actually observing the trends of the current market, asking around your friends, or just looking at what the MLMs are selling. The MLMs tend to know uh, what is new and what is marketable in the, in the sense of very unique. So in Malaysia, we realize that a lot of MLMs tend to make very unique products. Um, <clears throat> some of them questionable but uh, predominantly a lot of them are very new, which is where they use MLM as a, very um, <clears throat> as a very different way of marketing to educate the population in Malaysia. <clears throat> Another key question people ask is, um, what do I need to OEM a product? Well, you need an OEM manufacturer and uh, you need a good product idea and you need capital. And, they will, uh, and followed on by that is like, how do you know how good the OEM manufacturer is? And that's actually not very hard. There's a few criteria you need to look at. Uh, things like, uh, is it GMP certified? Has it? ISO 22000? Or any other relevant uh, certifications that a factory may need. And you will ask yourself, why do I need these certifications? Well, these certifications ensure the product number one does not have any problems with the regulatory issues in terms of registrations. Number two, the product is exportable. You can export it to most parts of the world. And how do you communicate uh, your, in, your intention or your desire to the OEM manufacturer is actually very important. Another thing is uh, what people always look overlook is actually the quality of the OEM product. How do you identify the right quality of, um, what, are, what are the right quality attributes of this product? And it's actually not very hard. You just have to understand what it is you want to do, what you're trying to mirror and what you're trying to achieve. Of course, everyone's trying to achieve a profit or a gain, right? So how do you identify a good quality product? Well, for powder spray, for instance, when you pour a, pour a powder, let's say, let's say you, you pour like a coffee powder, you pour it into water, it dissolves freely and readily, it doesn't clump, um, you don't actually need hot water. So you know the product has been engineered very well for um, dispersation into water. Another good attribute point is actually how long can the product uh, last or be stored for? And this one is uh, something that you really need to focus on because sometimes shelf life of the product highly um, determines uh, how long and how fast you can move your product. Most, most products will range between two to three years in terms of shelf life. And um, the next question um, uh, people ask us is, how do you communicate your expectations to us? Well, communicating your expectations uh, can be done through a list or what we call a, a checklist. And usually uh, there are a few things that you need to consider. Number one, the timeline that you want to achieve. Number two, your target cost price. Your target cost price is very, very important because you're looking at uh, either retailing it or selling it through, uh, through social media and whatnot. And you might need a times five or in MLM, MLM uh, models, you need a times 10 type of um, profit margin. So you need to understand what is the target cost that you want to achieve. And of course, the biggest question people ask is, 
what is the minimum budget to do this project? What is the minimum quantity? I don't have a big budget. I, I you know, I, I want to do something on the low. I, I'm, I'm strapped for cash. Well, an easy product to go into is actually cosmetics. Cosmetics, they are cheap for a few reasons. And the amount of money you require to, to start a cosmetic brand is around about 5,000 to 8,000 ringgit. This will bring about around about 300 to 400 units of uh, cosmetic products. And why, why cosmetics versus food? Well, the reason why food products tend to cost more to, to, do, to do is basically the quantities imposed by the raw material suppliers is massive. They're asking to take thousands of tons of powder. For example, you want to do a collagen product. Maybe they ask you to take around about 300 to 500 kilos of collagen. And that's actually the minimum order quantity that's required to undertake this product. The next question that people always ask is, how long does it take us to manufacture the product for you? Well, there's a few things you have to look at. The first thing is actually regulatory compliance. In Malaysia, if it's food or cosmetic, it takes around about two weeks to three weeks to get compliance. If it's a supplement, traditional product or medical device, you're looking at a minimum between six months to nine months up to a year for very, very unique products. So with that in mind, after that, it's contract manufacturers uh, time to source raw material, manufacture the product. And we're looking around about three weeks. Anyone that's able to manufacture the product within one to two weeks is reasonable. But there are some things you want to look at. You want to look at it, the scheduling of the factory. You want to look at the factory itself. You should do a site visit. And it's highly acceptable for customers to look at the premise. And I highly recommend this because you get, a, you get a good idea, you get good confidence in terms of the factory that's gonna help you out. So you should, do your, you should do your due diligence. The next question we ask is, do I need to register my products in Malaysia? And why? Why do you wanna go through all this trouble? Well, good news is cosmetics are actually really easy to register in Malaysia. We have a thing called the DRGD guidelines. You can actually Google that up. It's a, it's a guideline written by the Ministry of Health. And this DRGD lists what you can and cannot do. They have a list of banned substances, which you should always omit. Things like mercury, cadmium, and even the heavy metal level, the micro count that you should achieve. So it's actually very clear, very transparent. In fact, when you look at the DRGD, it even tells you the cost that we have to pay to the Ministry of Health to register the product for you. So we you roughly know how much money we have, to, we have to mark up. I think it's reasonable to accept a cosmetic registration from around about 500 to 800 ringgit, depending how complex the product is. By registering the product, you can think that the Ministry of Health has gone through and done its due diligence on your ingredients and your formulation. So another important part when we do contract manufacturing is the packaging. And a lot of people struggle with packaging. Why? Well, packaging, you have to source it from where? Source it from China and source it from Malaysia. But why people are not able to find packaging in Malaysia? And I could be wrong. You could correct me if I'm wrong. But based on our experience, we realize even Malaysia, we don't even make the spray heads or even the pumps. Most of them are imported. What we do make are the bottles. We make the flip caps. We make just the bottles or the flip caps. We don't really make much uh, other than that. And that was actually um, something that we realized during the, the CMCO and even during the CM, uh, CMO is there was a lack of pumps. There's a lack of bottles because all the raw materials, a lot of bottles from different, uh, different suppliers were all imported. So that was why there was massive shortages in terms of disinfectants and cleaning products until they lifted uh, the MCO. Another key interesting idea is supplements, drugs, medical devices, you know, the MAL registered products. You must ask yourself, why do I want to go through the trouble? Why do I want to spend that type of money on supplements? And it's actually because you want to have a claim. And those claims are much more, what we call marketable, compared to cosmetic or food products. Things like general health or wellness, um, improvement in terms of improvement in terms of um, what we call health, 
Those are all MAL registered products, which you need to do. <clears throat> so uh, a good concept to have uh, when you are doing product ideas is actually to look at uh, a list. And the list targets a few things. Are you looking for men's health, women's health, children's health? Why men's health? Well, men's health is actually evergreen. Uh, in terms of metabolism boosters, um, wellness is actually a very big one, which um, grows continuously throughout the whole year. In fact, we realized that during the lockdown, we were clearing more metabolic boosting products, you know, energy products, which help improve um, performance, which help improve fitness, was doing very well during the MCO. Uh, women's beauty products, of course, is an evergreen market. But with that in mind, because the, the MOQs are very low, a lot of competitions on the market, when you start to market it, you have a very good and aggressive social media plan. What happens is um, there's a lot of competition, which means it gets very expensive. Your acquisition costs could range from one ringgit all the way to 12 to 15 ringgit per, uh, per, per purchase. And the reason being is there's a lot of people selling cosmetic products. So you must be sure on your branding, on your messaging, and what you want your product to do in terms of price and function. An easy way to look at this is just Google it. You know, if let's say you want to look at an anti-aging product, just type anti-aging product. You see the first three or first page of products, and that's a very good indication on the USPs you can look at and looking at what ingredients that are being pushed now on the market. So things like that does help very much in the way you want to approach a new product idea. Um, sometimes a lot of people ask me, um, and I try to encourage people to increase their budget of spend for, the, for contract manufacturing. And the reason being is, um, once you have set your retail price, it's very hard to go back up. Um, the market remembers and they don't forget, you know, if you start at 50 and you go up to 100 in terms of retail at pharmacies or retail chains or even online, people will hold resentment to you. So you should have a clear goal in terms of your retail price. If you don't have enough money to run high quantities, which means your supply chain is not really optimized in terms of packaging, printing, raw material, and even contract manufacturing, you just have to bear in mind that you want to take a haircut. Instead of earning, let's say, 20 to 50% of margin being a product wholesaler, you'll be looking at maybe 15 to 30%. You have to give up about 15 to 20% because of that, that issue. So with that in mind, you, you'll be fine. Um, also, if you're looking at a very cheap product, products which are around one ringgit to two ringgit per piece or per sachet for food products, um, you, have to, you have to understand that it's, that's a cluttered market. It's tough business. And your you have to look at your marketing plan, how you're going to get the acquisition really low. I can share an experience with you. Uh, Freely ourselves, we, we make a product called Spray 8. Spray 8 is a wound care product, a price at 50 ringgit. And then when we realized we went to the hospitals, um, the margins was not enough for the hospitals to undertake. You'll be very surprised. There's a lot of AMP that goes into the products and incentives um, that we have to fork out. And that was costing us almost 60 to 70% of our margins on the product. So uh, compare, comparing that to retail, uh, retailing the product's fine. You know, we can range between 25 to 45% of margin of the 50 ringgit. And we give that to the retailers and that is sustainable. A good interesting uh, question today was um, what, what was a product that we've been uh, seeing uptrend for this quarter? And actually that's relaxation and stress products are doing very well. We've picked up around about three to five customers. We've closed three already. Um, they're looking at stress and wellness products. And that could be due to the increased stress of either working at home or financial stress and pressure. So there is definitely a higher demand for um, these stress related and uh, stress related relaxation products. I think one thing I forgot to mention was um, when you have your brand, what is your vision? What is it that you want to communicate to um, your customer? And a lot of times when people approach us, this has not been established yet. And I feel that's a very, very big thing uh, that people forget and, and, and forego is actually to communicate what is your vision to uh, your customer. Let's say, for example, you want to make a full organic natural range of cosmetics or even food, powders, supplements. Um, if that's not communicated in the beginning, we might add some 
fillers to help improve the dispersation of the product, to help improve the shelf life of the product, that might not be in sync with what you want to sell to your customer. So you must sit down, think about what it is you want to communicate to your customers. Um, why, 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 why all the certifications? Well, certifications for us is such a big thing. You know, we have ISO 22000, and with that you can go to Europe. Um, we can sell in Amazon UK, Amazon Europe, Amazon uh, US, and that's because of the FDA. Um, so picking the right manufacturer is very important there. Uh, what is the other questions we have here? I think as well as that is to figure out what type of marketing plan you want to do. Um, the reason that, that this is important is because there are ingredients like now um, for relaxation and health is things like ashwagandha, which um, tends to improve um, relaxation and regulate hormonal balance. And that's actually a very big one for uh, relaxation coming up now. But does that, is this ingredient what you want to sell to your customer? Or do you want to do something like a turmeric extract? and why this particular turmeric extract. Um, you must be focused and you must understand what you want. I think um, with one of our other uh, bigger customers, um, they are looking at these para and postbiotics and it's super new stuff. Um, They're saying, uh, my, my research team was even telling me that um, regulatory wise in Malaysia, they're not even sure where to place it. So what is this post and para um, biotics? Well, we can cover that probably next week once we come up with more uh, reading materials. It's actually the byproducts of um, the bacteria in, your, in, a, in, your, in this gut. So you could talk about like lactobacillus or whatever, and you add food to them and then we'll metabolize this stuff into some uh, broken down components. And they are marketing those ingredients for us to eat. And they claim that that improved gut health and improve um, the growth and distribution of uh, product. What is this? Um, it's uh, Gatsinia Manistana, a registered substance for antioxidant claims in MAR. I'm not sure what MAR is, but um, for Malaysia itself, yes, it's a registered uh, product for general health and wellness in capsule form and powder form. So we've done, we've done that part. It took us about a year to get that registration done. Uh, in other forms and factors, it's food. Uh, what else we have here is... Um, So I think, ah yeah, one more thing, the packaging. So your box, so this box, this guy, this guy, this box. A lot of people go cheap on this and whenever they go cheap on this, they have a lot of problems. So your box, I would highly recommend you go with at least a minimum 90 gram type of paper. This is what we're doing this one? But that is actually 350, 90 grams is like really heavy. Oh, so 90 grams is too thin. This is 350 That's grams. The maximum. Uh, 350 gram paper and why a 350 gram hard paper is important is when, when, when people pick up the product off the shelf they feel confident they know that this product is quality so you don't want to sell a cheap feeling product just because you want to save the 20 to uh, 10 to 20 cents and that 10 to 20 cents is nothing because once you, you start 3,000 to 5,000 pieces the costing is marginal it does not affect the cost much now the thing is actually the packaging and um, a lot of people are, are, are very are struggling now to identify where to where to find packaging. And actually, if you took the effort, there are places like Taobao, Lazada, where you can find fantastic packaging. And you ask yourself, why should I buy that? You know, I'm not confident in this China packaging. I don't understand the logistics of it. Well, I don't read and write Mandarin, which is where Taobao is at. Um, I use Google Translate and I'm still able to buy product in. So I highly recommend you have a look there on Taobao, use Google Translate and you can source fantastic looking packaging at friggin cheap ass prices. And it's all in Chinese room and So give it a try. There's no, there's no harm just ordering one or two because they do sell one or two and you'll be surprised. You thought it's gonna order thousands of them up. That's not true. They will sell you one piece as a sample just so you can evaluate whether that packaging is suitable for you. So I think in the era now, digitization, modernization on the way we do business has changed the scenario in Malaysia. I anticipate traders to take a very big hit as 
everyone becomes more well versed in using digital platforms such as Lazada, Shopee. I suggest you try the China platforms because they do ship to Malaysia. And I can tell you during the lockdown, I think the first week of MCO, we were getting packaging in where everyone could not, and that was from Taobao, and that's from Alibaba. I don't know how they did it, but they were sending stock to us during that first week where everyone was not able to get pumps and bottles. So I highly suggest to have a look there. Use Google Translate, maybe give us a message if you need help, and we can add that, we can help you out there. Actually, one of the big things that uh, we have changed at Furley for contract manufacturing is to assist people um, to purchase these unique packagings. And I think one of the big uh, success stories is actually in Ghana. They want to look for this very premium looking um, pump bottle. And we managed to bring it in from China around about one ringgit, 70, 70 cents with this gold chrome thing at 500 ml. It looks great, but it was really cheap. So things like that, uh, the more resourceful you are, the better advantage you'll get. Another thing that we realized by digitizing ourselves highly and looking for raw material digitally through a variety of platforms online now is we are able to source almost any type of raw material you are interested in. Any type, including branded raw materials where we might not be able to, uh, how do we say, in Malaysia, uh, talk to the principals to reduce the quantities. You'll be surprised that we are able to bring it in in the kilos instead of the hundreds of kilos. And that is because of the cross border trade between China and Malaysia. So now is better, is now is one of the best times to ever in, look into making your own product, to look at your own food product, to make, look at your own cosmetic product because now raw materials and ingredients are at all time low. Suppliers are very desperate to offload raw material to meet this year's quota. Uh, what are the other questions we have? That's it, is it? Uh, I think one question is, why does MAL take so long? MAL registration takes long for a few reasons. MALs, uh, I think those are supplements, traditionals, and, uh, and of course the drugs. Those, the drug one, we'll, we'll, we'll push that aside. MAL and traditional products, why they take long is the due diligence required for every piece of raw material is looked at through a microscope. For example, um, let's say we extract our uh, mangosteen, you know, that's what we are famous for. We make mangosteen extract, right? We extract it to a 1 to 10 ratio. Our safety data has to match that to the 1 to 10 ratio of the extract. And I think no doubt it's cumbersome and you would say it's a waste of time to some people. I think this is safety. And safety in Malaysia is paramount. I give, it, give my hats off to the Ministry of Health. No doubt slow and irritating. Um, the rules are there to protect the consumer and it's one of the toughest rules in the, in the world. Um, we export globally. Malaysia is tough. Uh, in terms of you want to make a new raw material, for example, the mangosteen again, we have to provide the safety data. We have to provide the stability data. We have to provide supporting documentation for our claims. For example, how come a product can be a wound care product? Well, we have to show antibacterial activity wound growth regeneration, anti-inflammation activity, and even uh, cytotoxicity on the skin. So I think the comprehensiveness of the Malaysian government ensures the products are very safe, but that all takes time. Uh, how long are we? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any other questions now? No, that's very not all the questions. Okay. So I think uh, today was just a, a rough idea on um, how to manufacture your product. If you have any direct questions, just post in the comments and uh, we'll get back to you soon or just email us or give us a call. Uh, I think our next schedule is... Next Wednesday. Next Wednesday for the live. And what's the topic? Um, the topic is OEM current trends. Oh, uh, the OEM current trends. So stay tuned for next Wednesday's uh, OEM current trends. I think that's 11 o'clock in the morning. Yes, 11. 11 o'clock in the morning. And uh, I'll share with you what are the latest products that we are manufacturing now. Perhaps even show you a demo on the products. You know, some of them taste uh, pretty bad, but we can make that taste good. So uh, stay tuned on Wednesday. We'll be back soon. And uh, any questions, just give us a post. Thank you for your time, guys. Bye. Ciao. Bye.